Welcome to part three. Today we are going to be building the drawers and a few accessories for your carts. These are the items that I am going to be adding to my cart. You by no means have to follow along to the T. I kind of just hope my ideas spark inspiration for you guys. On the belt sander slash planer cart, I am adding a sandpaper organizer to get rid of this monstrosity on my workbench. On the other side, I'm adding a spot to put my Dremel and its bits. I'm getting tired of pulling it in and out of the cabinet, and it's just super unorganized. Underneath that, I am adding a place for my squares and handsaw so that I can begin the process of getting rid of this toolbox. For my drill press and bandsaw cart, I am adding a place to put a nicer Forstner bit set when I buy it and get rid of my cheap set which floats around the top of my toolbox. Then I can stop playing the do I have that size or is it lost game. It will also hold my old hole saws and my new ones. On the other side, I am adding a bottle holder. I enjoy one of these sparkling apple juices every time I upload a video, so 14 of them should last me a good while. And lastly, we need to build the drawers. To start, I trimmed off 1 16th of an inch from my front board since it was simply held in place because of how snug it fit. With the fronts ripped down to 2 and 15 sixteenths, I went ahead and grabbed a scrap piece of plywood and I ripped a few pieces to that same measurement while the saw was still set up to use as the back of the drawer so that both sides matched. When running plywood through your table saw, make sure you are running in the same direction as the veneer's grain, otherwise you risk blowing out or tearing out the end. Measure the inside width of your cart's top and cut the backs to their appropriate length. I subtracted 1 eighth of an inch for smoother motion. After cutting the backs to length, it turns out I'll be able to use these scrap pieces for my sides. Now, they are not going to be the same height or the same length that these pieces are, so we have to do a little bit of working to find those. But to find their length, all you're going to do is take your tape measure, bonk your dowel rod that's in the center of your flip cart. Mine measures out to 10 inches. Now we're going to deduct an eighth of an inch just to give it a little bit of play inside of that hole. And you have your sides cut to length. And now I need to add in some plywood sheets so that way you can operate the drawer from either side. And this step is a lot easier if we kind of walk and talk through it. Set your table saw blade height to 3 16ths of an inch and the fence at 2 and 9 16ths of an inch. I did this so that my right hand had better control of my piece. Run the sides, front and backs through, then flip the front and backs only around to cut a groove on the adjacent side. Bump the fence to 2 and 7 16 of an inch and run those same pieces through again to widen your groove. Now that our drawers are real groovy, you will have two grooves into the fronts, two grooves for the backs, and the sides will actually have a groove on one side being the top and one side being the bottom of your drawer since, yeah. Next, we just need to remove the half inch material from what will be the bottom of this side and top of this side. So that way it allows our plywood access to the grooves and gives us a stop for each end. Now, the good thing about this is that your table saw is already set up for this measurement. So you just need to run your pieces through. On to assembly. I am going to be utilizing pocket holes. I put two on each side of the shorter boards just to hold everything into place. With the pocket holes and some tight bond, I believe that it should be strong enough to actually be utilized as a drawer since you don't have that bottom support. Most of your drawer support comes from that rabbited or grooved in bottom because it helps tighten and hold everything in place. But we don't have that anymore. When putting pocket holes into plywood, you do need to be careful that you're not over tightening or over driving them down because it will immediately split this board out. They are not very strong. Now during assembly, both of your sides will not be all the way on the bottom like they are right now. One with the groove is going to be near the top and the other groove is going to be at the bottom. So they won't be flipped the same direction. They'll be flipped like this. And that is because of your plywood piece so the groove needs to match up with your top groove and again groove then would be on the bottom so a bottom groove i'm assembling them so the right side is up and that is so that when the plywood gets slid in there it's slid in from the left side so i can pull the drawer out 
use my lefty, bam, grab my stuff since I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed, just reverse them. Not a big deal. And lastly, because our back board is shorter than our front board, since it is covering up the flipping cart operation, I did go ahead and just set my square. It is actually set to 13 16 That's what mine came out to be. Measure it so that it is askewed in the middle. Because we took a little extra off, I can't just utilize this board to find out where it would be centered at because it's more than three quarters of an inch. It is now an eighth inch over. So 13 16 is what I have him set to. So you'll see me using that as well when I'm gluing up. Once you have one of your drawers assembled, it's not a bad idea just to dry fit it into the hole just to make sure everything fits. Cause all of me loves all of you. Love your curves and all your edges. All your perfect imperfections. Guys, I make the mistakes so you don't have to. My original plans, this board was actually on the inside. So by putting on the outside, I extended it by three quarters of an inch. And I didn't deduct that measurement when I had put my sides in. So, whoopsie. And the last thing to fabricate is this board on the bottom. So there's one on the top and the bottom. And then it has that slidey motion, which is why we cut this board off. Just a simple quarter inch piece of plywood I drilled a hole into and it allows you to open your drawer from whichever way the flippy cart is at the time. For this, you're just gonna measure between the two grooves and rip a piece of quarter inch plywood down to that dimension. And then do the same measuring from the inside of this groove to the edge of your drawer and cut them down to their lengths. For the hole, I just measured in two inches centered and then drill out a one and one quarter inch hole using my hole saw Make sure that you are going just barely kissing the board and then flipping it over, drilling out the rest of the way. It'll prevent blowout so it looks pretty on your drawer. Okay, this is the last piece of fabrication. So what you're gonna do to make this little guy is actually just use a two inch hole saw really close to the edge of a board so you get this nice flat spot. And what it allows you to do is actually put a screw through there and turn it to lock your drawer in place. So let's pretend that your drawer is actually fit unlike mine. So you can put this piece in here, bam, you can turn it, and then you'll be able to pull your drawer in and out. If you wanted to mount two of them for redundancy, you can, but all you're gonna do is take this, line it up so it's just underneath the bottom of your flip cart, and then put a screw through there. Make it so it's snug, but not too hard to spin. If you guys wanna add a washer on there, that would actually help it so it doesn't untighten as you actually will be utilizing your cart. And there you go, a simple lock. To cover up my drawer being too long, Boo Boo, I found the center of the face of my drawer, made a mark, and then took my router bit and used a chamfer bit, chafer bit, whichever you call it, I forgot already, and ran it down until the base of my router just touched where that line was at, and that left me this nice little square spot where I could center in a handle. I don't actually own any handles, so I have 100,000 of these and I just put a hole in it. Probably gonna stay like that, I kinda like it. So no matter which way your carts are flipped around, you can just unlock your drawer, pull your drawer out, and, uh, and I also ran out of plywood, so this drawer is actually made with the dry erase markers. So no matter which way your drawer is facing, you can always access that drawer by pulling it out and opening it up to get to your items. But Aaron, what if my stuff falls through this hole? Just don't put small stuff in there. You can't really put a tiny board in there because of the sliding motion, so... As for cord management, I was playing around with the idea of making something that went onto the top of the carts and held the cords neatly back behind, but honestly, it's just gonna make it harder to vacuum and do cleanup afterwards. 
So here, this is literally what I do with almost every cord that I'm trying to coil up and keep organized. Take your length of cord. Take it where you want it to be not long anymore. Wrap it around your hand until you have about two feet left. And you take that two feet and you feed it through here like this, like this. Now you want to just make sure that your coil actually wraps around the cord. These are pretty thick. Thinner cords you don't have this issue with. There it is. There's your cord. And I, again, this is what I do with all the cords that are in this garage. And then when I'm ready to plug in the machine, I just grab my thing, bada bing, and it's done.